I love you, Alicia. In the previous episode, Victor and Alicia were chased by the cavalry and took refuge in a room, with no way out. They could only sit by the wall and resign themselves to fate. Victor took the opportunity to express his feelings to Alicia. He said, Everything I do is to prove to you that you are the only family I have in this world. Alicia was moved and was at a loss for words. Just then, Wes broke in with the cavalry, and they had no choice but to raise their hands and surrender. Alicia pleaded with Wes, Please don't do this, the people outside don't deserve to die. We were once good friends, but Wes coldly retorted, Everyone wants to live, but you can't save everyone. Victor also suggested, Let's turn off the lights, the people outside will retreat. Wes laughed, You really believe Alicia's lies? I thought you, Victor, were ruthless, which is why I followed you. I didn't expect you to be a coward. Then Wes signaled his men to open Alicia's backpack, and to their surprise, it contained a transmitter. Victor was puzzled as to why Alicia would bring such an item. Wes countered, Alicia can bring anything, but why a transmitter? Don't you understand yet? She's deceiving you, Alicia. Realizing she could no longer hide the truth, confessed. The transmitter was taken from the bunker because it could send messages to a wide area, but it lacked a wide area antenna, which Victor's rooftop just happened to have. Alicia's wish was not only to get her own people into the building but also to help all the wandering survivors outside. Bringing them all here, Alicia wanted to turn the building into a real padre. Wes mocked Victor again. This woman clearly deceived you, that's the real reason she wanted to go to the rooftop. Not just to turn off the spotlight. If more people come, do you think the building will remain secure? If you don't want to protect this place, then I will. As Wes was about to order his men to fire. Alicia knew it was useless to say anything more. All she could do was close her eyes and wait for death. Just regretting not doing something meaningful before dying. Gunshots rang out. But Alicia was unharmed. It turned out that Daniel had come to the rescue. Killing two cavalrymen. But Wes shot him in return. Taking advantage of the chaos. Alicia picked up a weapon and aimed at Wes. Then turned to check on Daniel's injury. Fortunately. Daniel was only shot in the shoulder. Not too seriously. Alicia asked Daniel to help rescue Naomi and others. Then go down and meet up with the rest. Telling them to stay away from the zombie horde. Wes threatened. Whoever tries to go down. I'll kill them first. Alicia didn't want to kill Wes. After all, they were once good friends. She tried to appeal to his emotions again, hoping to change his mind. But before she could finish, Alicia was shocked. Victor's long sword had pierced through Wes's chest, nailing him directly to the wall. <coughs> Alicia, trembling, asked, Why did you have to do this? Perhaps Alicia had forgotten that Victor was only gentle towards her. Anyone standing against him, Victor wouldn't hesitate to eliminate. Alicia couldn't accept that Victor had just killed Wes. But time was short. Now wasn't the moment to argue. They needed to hurry up and turn off the light. And the people waiting outside are puzzled when Alicia doesn't come out. Luciana also suggested they couldn't wait any longer. As long as the light kept spinning, zombies would continuously surround them. At that moment, some emerged from the building. It was Naomi and Grace. Sarah was the first to run up to them. After a brief exchange of pleasantries, Daniel explained the situation and urged that they needed to hurry into the building. Zombies from the shell craters were approaching. Luciana questioned, Is it true? To which Daniel replied, I'm not a liar. Indirectly pointing out Luciana's previous deceit. Without further ado, they quickly moved towards the interior of the building. Naomi wanted to tend to Daniel's wound. But he insisted she check on Charlie first. Luciana looked at Daniel with concern. Daniel asked Luciana, Why did you lie to me? Luciana, feeling helpless, responded, You were delirious at the time. Being alone outside, you would have died. Just then, gunfire came from the direction of the building, forcing them to retreat rapidly. Still, two were shot down in the process. Dwight led the group to take cover behind a phone booth. Only then realizing the shots were coming from the rooftop. Wendell sensed something and turned back to see a horde of zombies behind them. Was the plan to trap them here? At this point, Victor and Alicia reached the rooftop, with Victor immediately taking out his former subordinates. However, gunfire still echoed below. Victor used his binoculars and saw several cavalrymen resisting. Alicia didn't understand why they were still shooting. Victor suggested it might be the cavalrymen who went out to attract the zombies returning, with zombies behind them. Dwight had no choice but to lead the group towards the building. Alicia hurriedly asked Victor to turn off the light while she stayed on the rooftop to provide cover. Victor came to the electric switch and held it in his hand. 
He hesitated. Should he really let these people in? Their arrival would surely bring about more demands for democracy. Alicia, looking back at Victor in a daze, asked, What are you waiting for? Turn it off now. Victor questioned, Will you ever forgive me? Even if I turn off the light, even if I help you save everyone, I've killed so many, you won't accept me, will you? Before he could finish, Alicia approached him, she wasn't in the mood to discuss this, even if it meant fighting with Victor. <laughs> Looking at Alicia on the ground, Victor said, You will never, you will never love me, will you? Alicia also spoke her mind. There could have been a chance, but you destroyed it yourself. I didn't have a choice! Of course you did! You always do! And you always make the wrong one! I was trying to save your life! No, you were trying to save yours! And you didn't care who you had to kill to do it! That's not true! After saying this, Alicia launched a surprise kick at Victor, followed swiftly by a punch. In the midst of their argument, Alicia's left hand pierced the oil tank, as Victor tried to escape. Alicia hit him in the face with her elbow, but she again damaged a cable, one that was securing the wide area antenna. The antenna fell directly onto the spotlight, creating a small explosion and sending flames shooting in all directions. However, it inadvertently achieved the goal. The light was successfully turned off, though it was already too late. Zombies had reached the base of the building. The building's main gate had been broken open. One of the cavalrymen ran too slow and was jumped on by the zombies. These zombies, covered in pustules, clearly carried a significant amount of radiation. Fortunately, Dwight and the others quickly ran inside the building. Instead of going down to rescue, Alicia climbed up to where the large light was located. Aiming for the wide area antenna, she took out the transmitter, connected the wires, and started broadcasting. I am Alicia Clark. If anyone is listening, you are not alone. The place you are seeking, the place you've heard of, Padre, is right here in this building. We will establish the new home you are looking for. We can help you. But now, we are in trouble and need your help. Alicia also broadcasted the coordinates of the building. Right after she finished, sparks from the antenna fell and ignited the gasoline that had leaked earlier. Victor realized that at this rate, the entire building would be set ablaze. Alicia wanted to do something, but her illness flared up again, and she fainted. Most of the building's fuel was on the rooftop, making the situation increasingly dire. Lisa! Many survivors find this place and help them with the zombies outside? Will their building be destroyed in the end? Alicia was unconscious amidst the flames, when she regained consciousness. She vaguely saw people in a frenzy, busily engaged in something unknown. Carrying Alicia was Dwight, accompanied by the medic Naomi. <sighs> Upon waking again, Alicia saw a small bird beside her, seemingly a symbol of hope. Jacob, seeing Alicia awake, joyfully called Naomi to check on her. Okay, Alicia. Alicia's condition was due to dehydration and fever, which left her incredibly weak. As Naomi was examining Alicia, Alicia looked around, puzzled as to why everyone was at the beach preparing boats. Naomi explained, Don't you remember? The building caught fire last night. Alicia then realized, looking back to see black smoke still billowing from the building, indicating it was still burning. Naomi continued, Those radiation-carrying zombies, if they get inside the perimeter, will be burnt and release radiation into the air. So, we decided to leave before the zombies are incinerated. Alicia noticed Victor was not there. Naomi explained, he didn't want to leave and stayed in the building alone. Alicia looked towards the building with mixed emotions, then observed people busily preparing to leave. Suddenly, a little girl appeared among the crowd. Alicia was stunned. She couldn't believe it. She had been searching for this girl for a long time. Hey! Before Alicia could approach, the girl vanished mysteriously. Alicia has a constant fever, and when she was chased by the stalkers, she vaguely saw this girl transporting her to safety, but she had clearly seen the girl just now. How could she disappear? As she pondered, the girl reappeared. Alicia quickly ran up, asking her to stop. The girl turned and said, I wasn't running, I just need to find my friend. She pointed towards the burning building. My friend is in there, and he knows where Padre is. After saying this, the girl ran towards the building and disappeared into the smoke within seconds. Alicia, watching everyone busily preparing, thought that going to an unknown place by boat wasn't necessarily safe. If she could follow the girl to Padre, everyone wouldn't have to risk their lives for survival. Without alerting anyone, she followed. After walking some distance, 
Alicia didn't see the girl again. Minutes later, she passed an armored vehicle, not knowing how long she walked. Alicia reached an abandoned cabin, starting to suffer from a high fever and feeling weak. Then, the girl appeared again behind the house. Alicia, staggering, followed. She was desperate to find out if Padre truly existed, but no matter how much she called, the girl didn't respond. When Alicia caught up, she was shocked to find a zombie. <laughs> Then, Alicia looked at her own arm, peeling off her glove to reveal a rotting limb, her prosthetic missing, images of being bitten by a zombie flooded her mind, and her emotions began to stir wildly, she even saw herself becoming a zombie before losing consciousness, when Alicia woke up again, her face was covered in sweat, she was inside an armored vehicle, and standing opposite her was the little girl, Alicia glanced at her arm, her prosthetic was placed beside her, indicating her previous visions were likely a fever-induced hallucination. The girl told her, I heard your cries, then saw you unconscious on a corpse, so I brought you here. Alicia wanted to know who the girl was. The girl was elusive, not revealing her name, only mentioning she had come to the beach after hearing Alicia's message. Alicia tried to see what she looked like, but the girl said she never removes her mask. The girl then asked if Alicia's illness was due to an infection. Alicia, not wanting to delve into the topic, merely told her it was pointless to talk about it as she wouldn't live much longer anyway. Then she opened the armored vehicle's storage box to look for some fever-reducing medicine. Suddenly, Alicia turned to the girl and asked, Is it true what you said? Can your friend really help me find Padre? The girl confidently assured Alicia it was true, but only if Alicia could help her find him, as he was her only remaining family in the world. Alicia didn't respond and continued searching for the medicine. Eventually, she found a videotape, the one Althea had used to interview her mother, Alicia had watched it before. Madison had recounted how Alicia and Nick, as children, had rescued a small bird and named it Amina. Alicia put the tape in her backpack as a memento. She misses her mom. She asked the girl where her friend was and how they could find him. The girl wasn't sure of his location, but they could try calling him from the rooftop of the building using Alicia's transmitter. As it had a wide range, Alicia immediately objected. The building was not only on fire but also surrounded by numerous radiation-carrying zombies. She urged the girl to join her on the boat, suggesting they might contact her friend if they traveled farther away. Emotionally, the girl retorted, If you don't want to help me, why did you follow me? Alicia replied, I just didn't want you to die out there. I wanted you to help me find Padre, to do something meaningful for my friends in my final moments. Now, I might not even live to reach the building. The infection could take me down at any moment. Anyone bitten by a zombie will die, the girl countered. You can beat the infection and help your friends. Alicia dismissed this as naive, thinking the girl didn't understand the consequences of a zombie bite and was about to pack up and leave. However, the girl insisted she was telling the truth and showed her left arm, revealing a scar. I was once bitten but I'm still alive, the girl said. Alicia couldn't believe it. How is that possible? The girl continued, telling her that her friend, who had saved her, could certainly save Alicia too. As long as they could find him, he could even take them all to Padre. Hearing this, a glimmer of hope arose in Alicia's heart, and she agreed to accompany the girl to the building to use the transmitter. An hour later, they finally arrived at the building. However, seeing the scene there, Alicia felt it was impossible to enter and urged the girl to return to the beach and leave with her. But the girl insisted on going in. As they argued, a few zombies were attracted to them. Alicia rushed to deal with them but began to feel dizzy again and fell onto the grass. As she lay there, watching the approaching zombies, unexpectedly, the little girl swiftly took down three zombies and then came to Alicia, urging her to hold on. The girl used a walkie-talkie to call Alicia's companions for rescue. Alicia passed out again, and when she regained a bit of consciousness, she was on a stretcher. The people who came to her rescue were naturally her group of good friends. Alicia asked them to stop and, regaining some strength, inquired how they found her. Dwight mentioned they heard her calls for help, but it was Josiah who found her first, having heard her distress signal. Otherwise, she would have been eaten by zombies. Alicia then remembered the little girl and asked where she was. The group was confused, not understanding whom Alicia was talking about. It was impossible. The little girl had called for help and even helped her kill the zombies. Dwight questioned if she was sure it was the girl who killed the zombies, pointing out that the blood on her left hand suggested otherwise. Indeed, there was blood on her hand, puzzling everyone about what had happened. Naomi, feeling Alicia's forehead and noting she was still feverish, 
speculated that Alicia might have been hallucinating due to her high fever. Even Josiah confirmed that when he found her, she was alone. Alicia, however, insisted that the girl had entered the building and she needed to find her and then find Padre. She had to go back. Everyone present knew Alicia was experiencing hallucinations and prepared to forcibly take her back to the beach. Alicia earnestly pleaded, let me go back. She can lead me to Padre and then none of us will have to risk anything. It's also about saving myself. The girl was bitten by zombies and survived. I don't want to die or become a zombie. It sounds absurd, but please believe me, the girl is real. I'm sure you're not just seeing her because you want to. Daniel stepped forward, understanding this feeling better than anyone. When he was delusional, Alicia had helped him clear his mind. He decided to help Alicia fulfill this wish. Even if it was just her hallucination, Luciana also expressed that she was willing to go as well. Seeing Luciana and Daniel's determination, the others also agreed to accompany them. 